from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the daily celebration, to the celebration of the daily televised Mass. I'm Father Michael Coots, and today we have Deacon Terry Da Silva assisting at this Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first are Kathleen and family from Toronto, Ontario, in loving memory of her husband, Deacon Pat Matthews, who passed away on the 6th of November, 2018. Also for the good health and special intentions of the family. The second is from the ex-students of the class of 1964 of Sacred Heart School in Mombasa, Kenya, with the deceased members and spouses of their class. Deacon Terry is from that class, and thank God he's alive, not deceased. But pray for his son, Dr. Jonathan uh, De Silva, who is waiting for a kidney transplant. Our thanks go out to the donors for the gift of this Mass. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, we ask the God of mercy and compassion to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light to all nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the salt of the earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path and give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Greet Prisca and Aquila, who work with me in Christ Jesus, and who risk their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church of the, their house. Greet my beloved Apinetus, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard among you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my beloved Stasius. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. I, Tertius, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Quartus greet you. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with, be with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all this, and they ridiculed Jesus. So he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts. For what is prized by human beings is an abomination in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I do not go to the theaters very often to see a movie. The last one I saw was in 2014, Noah, starring Russell Crowe. As soon as the movie was over, the pat patrons got up and started walking out of the theater. But I sat down because I wanted to read all the credits, the actors, the actresses, the screen, the cameramen, and all that. Now, by the time I reached the car, I'd forgotten all those names. But one thing struck me, Noah was not made by Russell Crowe alone. It took a whole lot of people in order to create that movie. And in today's first reading, we hear a whole lot of people that Paul gives credit to. He, a whole lot of names which perhaps mean nothing to you and to me. But they were the ones who influenced his way of preaching, influenced and modified his behavior, influenced and helped him to look at things from a different point of view. And therefore, it was very important to give them credit. Paul alone preached the word of God, but he needed all these in order to fulfill his apostolate. Paul had never been to Rome, so this letter that he's writing to the Romans was something that was totally new. But many of these communities had moved. We have Prisca and Aquila, who had moved in the year 49 when Emperor Claudius was persecuting the people, the Christians in Rome. And they had come to Corinth. And Prisca and Aquila, Aquila was a tent maker. And when he was in Corinth, Paul came and stayed with him for 18 long months. They were elders within the church. They helped to hold the Christian community together. But it's very interesting. It's not Aquila and Prisca, it's Prisca and Aquila. It was she that held the community together, and legend has it that she was the one who was even a presbyter in that little faith community. She taught, she corrected, and she affirmed the work over there. Later on, Prisca and Aquila would go down to Ephesus, and once again, she was the one who would guide the church in Ephesus. 
At that time, there was a man called Apollos, who was a very charismatic uh, and dynamic preacher, but he only preached about Jesus Christ what he had heard from John the Baptist, and he was only baptized with the baptism of John the Baptist. Prisca and Aquila took him under their wing, taught him exactly what Christ had taught, and then baptized him in the baptism of Christ and sent him back to Corinth. As I said, legend says that she was a presbyter. Some scripture scholars even say that Prisca wrote the letter to the Hebrews. Now, that would be sheer irony, because the letter to the Hebrews deals about the priesthood, the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, which was temporary and for one occasion, in contrast with the priesthood, the order of Melchizedek, which was permanent and was always over there. The second set of, I'm not going to speak about all those names over there, I can't remember them, but the other one I want to mention was Andronicus or Andronicus and Junia. Now, it's very, very surprising. Paul calls them apostles. Now, the word apostle means to be sent, and the original apostles were the 12 that Jesus had chosen. Junia is the only person in Scripture a woman to be called an apostle. Marvelous indeed. So in the early church, women were really very much in the forefront of keeping the community together, whether it was Lydia in Philippi, whether it's in Dorcas in Jaffa, they were there all over the place, and they held the church together. Very recently, I was looking at a YouTube about the Confederation in 2019, the Confederation of the Sisters of Charity in America. There were about 14 or 15 different uh, congregations involved in that federation. And I heard the homily done by Sister Brenda Lee, no, I forget, Boy Verrett, who was a sister of St. Martha from Antigonish. And she preached on the Blessed Trinity, and it was absolutely brilliant. Not only that, it was clearly written, and it was a lot of substance. If she were preaching in the church, I would go for Mass every Sunday to be nourished. Very often I go to church, and the homilies are brilliant, but at the end of it, I say, where's the beef? What's substantial about it? And therefore, we need to have men and women, and Paul decided that he was going to do that. He was going to put men and women in charge of the faith community that he had. Which brings us to the gospel. And in the gospel, Jesus takes the example of the unjust steward, which we hear in Luke from verses 1 to 8, just before our reading today. And Jesus does not put him as an example, but puts his effort as an example for all of us to proclaim the good news. Jesus condemns the, the steward later on, saying that his means and techniques were wrong, but his effort was good. And therefore, like Paul, like Jesus, we too should co-opt men and women who will be willing to choose the right master in order to serve and proclaim the good news of the gospel. God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together for the needs of our church. We pray for all those listed in the daily televised Mass Book of Remembrance, for all those who have died and no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the sponsors of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Deacon Pat Matthews and his family, who have been praying for him, Kathleen Matthews and, his family, and her family, and for the class of 1964 of Sacred Hajj in Mombasa, Kenya, for those of their members living and deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord in thanksgiving for all the men and women who continue to serve and help us in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Like Paul, he thanked all his workers. We thank all those who help us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Loving God, we thank you, and we ask you to bless all our souls of the faithful departed who have gone before us in the sign of peace. We make this prayer in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes a prayer to you, and grant that consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in goodness you created us, in justice you condemned us, but in mercy you redeemed us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven <coughs> and the blessed seraphim together worship with exaltation. We join them as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Be. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, all the clergy and this entire people your son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Pat Matthews, remember the class of 19, the deceased members of class 1964 of the Sacred Heart School. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with yours. and wherever you are, share a sign of peace and friendship. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, 
permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, O Lord, that by our, by our participation in this mystery may its saving effects grow upon us. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.